Hey guys, Mo Long here. You can follow me at Mitchell C. Long on Twitter and Instagram, and you can check me out at cupofmo.com. I'm here to take a look at Batocera Linux running on the Rock Pro 64. Batocera is a retro gaming distribution that is Linux based, and it's pretty similar, I found, to Recallbox, and almost looks exactly the same. And it operates similarly to both Recallbox and RetroPie in that it runs RetroArch with the emulation station front end over top and even includes the Kodi Media Center for both streaming add-ons. I use it a lot for Plex as well as for local media playback. It plays back pretty much any file that you throw at it. I've used Batocera on the Raspberry Pi before and I'm pretty excited to see how it runs on the Rock Pro 64, which is one of my personal favorite single board computers that you can get. It's way more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and features a Rockchip RK339 processor, which is a hexacore chip that features dual ARM Cortex A70U CPU cores and four Cortex A53 cores. And for graphics, it's rocking a Mali T860 MP4 GPU. And you can get it with either 2 gigs or 4 gigs of RAM. I'm running the 4 gigabyte variant. And it just has a lot of other amenities as well, including a 40 pin GPIO header, as well as eMMC module socket. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to download the appropriate image for our Rock Pro 64. You'll notice that there are a number of other platforms that Batocera is compatible with, including x86 PCs, a few different versions of the Raspberry Pi, the Odroid XU4, another one of my favorite single board computers. Highly recommend you check out the XU4 if you haven't already, the Odroid C2, and the Odroid N2, as well as a number of S905 variants. So we're going to download the Rock Pro 64 installer here. So let's go ahead and download that. I've already got it downloaded. So then once you download that Rock Pro 64 Batocera installer, it should go to maybe your downloads folder. So what you're going to want to do. And go to your downloads directory and you should have that file it'll be in image.gz file so it might be a good idea to extract the image from that using 7-zip or you might be able just to mount that straight to either a micro SD card or an eMMC module since I'm using the Rochambeau Retro Gaming Case, I'm actually just going to use a micro SD card, even though eMMC modules are preferable, because with the Rochambeau Case, you can't access the eMMC module socket unless you take the entire case apart. So once you've got your image downloaded and ready to burn, go ahead and launch some kind of application. I'm using Etcher, and you can use something else where you can mount an operating system to bootable media. I'm going to go ahead and launch Etcher here. So first up, go ahead and select your image. Next up, select your boot drive. Mine's already selected. And then once you're ready, just go ahead and click flash. And it should only take a couple minutes. And once your image is completely mounted and you get a notification saying it's ready to go, pop it out, put in your Rock Pro 64, and you're ready to start using Batocera.
Hey guys, here we are in Vatosera running on the Rock Pro 64. And the layout, as you can probably tell, looks almost exactly like that of RetroPie. And you'll see a number of different systems here. These are only the ROMs that I actually have loaded on an external drive. If you push the start button, you have a number of different options here. Like you can launch Cody Media Center. You can toggle on some different game settings. Mess with your controller settings. The UI. Toggle front end music on and off. You can scrape your ROMs and you can go to system settings so what i'm really pleased with here is just how well a lot of games run on the rock Pro 64 when compared to other boards like the raspberry pi and so let's just go ahead and try out a super nintendo system game here and this should run like a champ on the Rock Pro 64. It should have no problem at all running games from that. And as was expected, Super Nintendo ran pretty well. I now want to try something a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to go ahead and run a PSP game. We're going to be playing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is one of my favorite video games for PSP. I also played this on PS2 and really loved it. And in fact, a lot of the older Harry Potter games for PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, such as Sorcerer's Stone and especially Chamber of Secrets on PS2 are some of my favorite games, really underappreciated platformers. If you haven't played those, I highly recommend it.
the villagers of Little Hangleton still called it the Riddle House. Half a century ago, a servant had found all three riddles dead. Perhaps if we were to do it without the boy, my lord. No. Harry Potter is as good as mine. It is decided. Harry Potter and his friends Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger travelled by portkey to the Quidditch World Cup final, where they saw Ireland defeat Bulgaria. Later that night, a gang of Death Eaters, followers of Lord Voldemort, rampaged across the campsite. Arthur Weasley sent Harry, Ron and Hermione back to the portkey. And there you go. That was some PSP performance on the Rock Pro 64 running Batusera. And I gotta say, I'm pretty pleased. It was definitely playable there and really blows a lot of those other boards like the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, even the Ojoard XG4 out of the water. And granted, your games will vary a little bit. So if you're running something like God of War Chains of Olympus, that one is way more demanding and you might have to do a few tweaks such as toggling on frame skip but that just sort of ranges from game to game and this is easily one of the more powerful single board computers that you can get i highly recommend it and i think bato sierra is one of the better distributions for it i'm a big fan of I also really like running Recall Box. I think that's definitely one that you should check out for the Rock Pro 64. And I'm here in the Cody for Plex add on under Bato Sarah on the Rock Pro 64 just because I did want to take a look at how Cody runs. And as you can imagine, it runs really well on this board. It's not the most intensive program. And you even have a lot of Cody media centers for really underpowered boards like the Raspberry Pi Zero. So the Rock Pro 64 will have no problem with this. I do think it's a really nice inclusion though, because it sort of makes 
this particular operating system really comprehensive OS because I typically use mine mostly for retro gaming as a lot of people do but it's nice to be able to just hook this up and switch to Cody to play back some various movies TV shows music stored on an external hard drive that's hooked up to the Rock Pro 64 or launch one of these apps like Plex and be able to stream a bunch of stuff for a nice little home theater PC slash retro game console all in one. So let's take a look at just a file playing here. 